In the lands between, there is one who is known as the Red-Haired Champion, the Leal Hound of the Golden Order, the second Elden Lord and King Consort to Queen Merica, Radagon of the Golden Order. But who is Radagon? Where does he come from? And what mysteries or skeletons lurk in his closet? Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am a human just a car and today is the first installment of videos where we'll be diving into the character of Radagon of the Golden Order. This video has been in the draft since before my destined death video, which was 10 months ago. This topic is so big that I decided halfway through writing this script that it'll have to be divided into separate videos. So make sure to come back for part two on my theories when it comes out. There will be many spoilers ahead, so please proceed at your own risk. Radagon is a figure veiled in mystery. Everything that we know about him is extremely vague and at times contradictory. After beating the game, I felt as though I was left with more questions than answers. So to try and answer my many burning questions, I started by creating a timeline. It starts with a quick summary of what I like to call the pre-Radagon era. Before rising to godhood, Queen Merica, who is of the Numen race, was chosen by the Two Fingers, envoys of the Greater Will, making her an Empyrean. Queen Merica was then given a shadow, Malaketh. Before establishing the Golden Order, Queen Merica plucked the Rune of Death, or Destined Death, out of the Elden Ring and had Malaketh lock it away into his blade. This is described by the remembrance of the Black Blade. Malaketh was a shadow-bound beast given to his Empyrean. Merica's sole need of her shadow was a vessel to lock away Destined Death. We can confirm the order of these events because of Enya's dialogue. The Rune of Death goes by two names. The other is Destined Death, the Forbidden Shadow, plucked from the Golden Order upon its creation. After creating the Golden Order, Queen Merica took a consort, a warrior named Horalu, and began to wage war on all of the Erd Tree's enemies. The incantation, Protection of the Erd Tree's description reads, In the beginning, everything was in opposition to the Erd Tree. But through countless victories in war, it became the embodiment of order. Horalu took on the name Godfrey, as well as the beast Sirash onto his back as part of his vow as the Elden Lord. Godfrey's icon states, Godfrey was a ferocious warrior. When he vowed to become a lord, he took the beast regent Sirosh upon his back to suppress the ceaseless lust for battle that raged within. The biggest and most significant battle Godfrey fought was the war against the giants. This war was waged in an attempt to destroy the fell god, or the Flame of Ruin as it's later called by Enya and Melina. Queen Merica's own words tell us the story. Hark, brave warriors. Hark, my Lord Godfrey. We commend your deeds. Guidance hath delivered ye through each ordeal to the place ye stand. Put the giants to the sword and confine the flame atop the mount. Let a new epoch begin, an epoch glistening with life. Brandish the Elden Ring for the age of the Erd Tree. Elden Lord Godfrey and his army of warriors would be victorious over the giants and would continue to wage wars all across the lands between. There were two more significant battles Godfrey personally fought in. As his armor states, The age of the Erd Tree began amongst conflict when Godfrey was lord of the battlefield. He led the war against the giants, faced the Storm Lord alone, and then there came a moment when his last worthy enemy fell, and it was then, as the story is told, that the hue of Lord Godfrey's eyes 
faded. This is a quick reminder to subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and if you're enjoying this video, to hit the thumbs up button down below. Thanks! Now sometime between the war against the giants and Godfrey's final victory at Castle Morn, the two Lyurnian Wars took place. This is when we hear the second Elden Lord mentioned for the very first time. The first Lyurnian War was seemingly won by a champion named Radagon. The sword monument states, The first Lyurnian War, Radagon's glory burns red as his hair. The use of the word glory indicates that Radagon was victorious and renowned in some way for his part in the war. The Erdtree incantation Barrier of Gold also mentions Radagon, stating, This incantation was used by the champions of the Erdtree in the First and the Second Lyurnian Wars, during which the red-haired Radagon joined the hero's ranks. I bring all of this up because this is the earliest mention of Radagon I've been able to find in the game. Before the First Lyurnian War, Radagon was never mentioned. This either means he didn't exist, wasn't born yet, or was insignificant up until the point that he joined the hero's ranks in the First Lyurnian War. It's unclear what the Golden Order gained from this victory. But not long after, a Karian sorceress and champion would rise up in the Academy of Raya Lucaria and establish herself and her line as royalty. The Remembrance of the Full Moon Queen states, In her youth, Renala was a prominent champion who charmed the Academy with her lunar magic, becoming its master. She also led the Glintstone Knights and established the House of Karia as royalty. With Renala at the head of both the Karian army and the Academy of Raya Lucaria, Radagon once again descended upon Lyurnia in the Second Lyurnian War. Pastor Muriel explains this. Lord Radagon was a great champion, possessed of flowing red locks. He came to these lands at the head of a great golden host. When he met Lady Renala in battle, he soon repented his territorial aggressions there and became husband to the Karian queen. It would seem that Renala's lunar magic was not only able to charm the academy, but also Radagon. He came to these lands at the head of a great golden host. Some have interpreted this to mean he came to the lands between, but I think what Pastor Muriel was referring to is Lyurnia when he says these lands. Regardless, this outcome is vastly different from the outcome of the First Lyurnian War. The Sword Monument reads, The Second Lyurnian War. No victory for the Golden, nor for the Moon. No prize but atonement, the birth of a vow. This leads us straight into the marriage of Lord Radagon and Lady Renala. Lord Radagon ceased his violent campaign on Lyurnia and instead became the Lord of Caria by proxy of his marriage to Queen Renala. The marriage was widely perceived as something to celebrate, as shown by the description of the full moon crossbow, made to celebrate the matrimonial union and reconciliation between the houses of the Erd Tree and the full moon, Lyondel and Raya Lucaria. Reconciliation means to restore friendly relations, which is exactly what Radagon intended for at the Church of Vows, as told by Pastor Muriel. Radagon once cleansed himself with celestial dew, repented his territorial aggressions, and swore his love to Renala. The order of the Erdtree and the fate of the moon were conjoined, and all the wounds of war forgiven. The union wasn't without its curiosities, however. When first entering their marriage, Radagon brought with him golden tailoring tools. Their description states, Tailoring tools made from gold. Tools brought with the red-haired Radagon when he married into the Karian line. 
With these tools, specifically his golden sewing needle, Radagon would sew the mouths shut of those closest to him and his wife, Queen Rinala. The Mask of Confidence is a mask with the mouth sewn shut with gold thread. When Radagon married Rinala, he ordered the Carian magic preceptors to don these masks to make it clear that all of their matters were to be kept strictly private. Radagon specifically silenced those around him after joining the Carian royal line. This is a bit of a strange and seemingly nefarious action that I'd like you to keep in mind. This was a time of peace, and many gifts were exchanged during this period. The Glintstone Chris was one such gift. Its description reading, Ritual Blade once presented to Lyondell by the Academy of Raya Lucaria to celebrate their newfound peace. Radagon and Rinala would go on to have three children together, Radon, Rikard, and Rani. Lord Radagon did not seem particularly close with any of his children, except for Radon, who, however, was more infantilized by the Lord of the Battlefield, First Elden Lord Godfrey. Radon's armor reads, The Golden Lion is said to symbolize Godfrey, the Elden Lord, and his beast regent, Sirash. From his youngest years, Radon was naturally captivated by the Lord of the Battlefield. Radon was also very proud of the red hair he inherited from his father, something Radagon personally despised. Radon inherited the furious flaming red hair of his father Radagon and is fond of its heroic implications. So it says in the description of Radon's red mane helm. The giant's red braid gives us some explanation as to Radagon's adverse reaction. Every giant is red of hair, and Radagon was said to have despised his own red locks. Perhaps that was a curse of their kind. This is evidence enough for a lot of people that Radagon himself is at least part giant. Although I'm not entirely convinced on the subject, I won't write it off completely, so let's keep this in mind. In lieu of spending much time with his three children, Radagon instead focused primarily on learning sorcery. Radagon's icon tells us, as the husband of Rinala of Caria, the red-haired Radagon studied sorcery. What I found odd was the absence of Radagon being mentioned in any spell's descriptions. The only connection I could find that links him to the Academy of Raya Lucaria is the Red Wolf of Radagon, an early game boss found right before Queen Rinala. So what exactly was Radagon studying? Another interesting aspect involves that of the Cuckoo Soldiers and Knights. The Cuckoo are the soldiers and knights of Raya Lucaria, or at least that is what we are told. A spell known as the Scholar's Shield states, one of the Glintstone sorceries of the Academy of Raya Lucaria, taught to the Knights of the Cuckoo by the Academy as payment for their contract. This makes it sound as if the Cuckoo were paid swordsmen of the Academy, not a loyal army. Another hint at this is the description of the Cuckoo Knight's armor, which says, Armor worn by Raya Lucaria Academy Knights. Its left breast is emblazoned with a peering cuckoo, whence came their name. Perhaps the bird's shrewd gaze is an expression of the refusal to be mere servants of the Academy. There isn't any mention of the cuckoo during the First and Second Lyurnian Wars, at least none that I have found. This makes me wonder if they were formed after the peaceful end of the Second War, and therefore, after the marriage of Radagon and Lady Rinala. There is a theory floating around the internet regarding Radagon being a cuckoo symbolically, and that he might have been the one to form and or truly command the cuckoo, not the academy. This is just a theory, but yet another interesting thing to keep in mind. By the end of Godfrey's long campaign, instead of being rewarded for his multiple victories, he and his warriors had grace stripped away from them. 
This is when they officially became tarnished. The sword monument reads, Lord Godfrey, at last at the end of his campaign, his golden armies unvanquished and unbowed, yet finds grace lost, tattered, and faded. Queen Merica is the one personally responsible for this, as Melina tells us, Words of Queen Merica, who vanished long ago, if you wish, I will share them with you. Very well. In Marika's own words, my lord and thy warriors, I divest each of thee of thy grace. With thine eyes dimmed, ye will be driven from the lands between. Ye will wage war in a land afar, where ye will live and die. After this moment, the long march begins. This is described in the remembrance of Hora Lu. When Godfrey, first Elden Lord, was robbed of his grace, becoming tarnished, he took with him his kinfolk and left the lands between. This would be the catalyst for our next major event, Radagon leaving Lady Renala and marrying Queen Merica. Pastor Muriel explains this. When Godfrey, first Elden Lord, was hounded from the lands between, Radigan left Renala to return to the Erdtree capital, becoming Queen Marika's second husband and King Consort, taking the title of second Elden Lord. There is no concrete explanation given for his decision to abandon his first wife, nor for Queen Marika to marry him in the first place. In fact, this seemed rather odd, as Pastor Muriel goes on to say, The mystery endures to this day as to why Lord Radigan would cast Lady Renala aside, and moreover, why a mere champion would be chosen for the seat of Elden Lord. Whatever the reason, Radagon's betrayal to Queen Renala would not only leave her utterly heartbroken, but also in a state of mental fragility. The once great and powerful leader of the Academy of Raya Lucaria and Queen of the Carian family now spends her time obsessed with the only parting gift Radagon left her, the Amber Egg. Pastor Muriel tells us, In the end, Lady Renala was left alone, cradling the Amber Egg Lord Radagon bequeathed her. Now she devotes herself to it through forbidden right the grim art of reincarnation. Something important to note is that the Amber Egg actually harbors a great rune inside of it, the great rune of the unborn. But this is something we'll talk about in my next video. This one event sets off a chain reaction, one of the biggest being the Academy's betrayal of the Carian royals. Radagon's abandonment of his first wife left her in despair and the Academy took no mercy on her. The Crescent Crown's description reading, When Renala, head of both the Academy of Raya Lucaria and the Carian royal family, lost her husband Radagon, her heart went along with him. And then, those at the Academy realized that Renala was no champion after all. Queen Renala is then captured and subsequently locked inside of the Grand Library at the Academy of Raya Lucaria. Great and beautiful full moon witch. Sadly, her heart was broken when Lord Radigan left her. And then, when the Academy rebelled against the royals, she was locked away in the Grand Library. Pastor Muriel is not the only one to describe these events. The Cuckoo Great Shield's description states, Metal great shield painted with a peering cuckoo, carried by the enchanted knights sworn to the academy. Our enemy is none other than Caria itself. This would lead to civil war in Lyurnia. Master E.G., who sits at the base of the road to Caria Manor, gives us incredible insight on what took place there. This territory once belonged to the Carian royal family. 
Their manor lies not far beyond this point. When the Rea Lucari Academy turned on the Karians, the Knights of the Cuckoo descended on this tract. After leveling it, they carried on to the manor. The Karians were taken off guard, but their strength had not waned, and they repelled the Knights' onslaught by conjuring an enchanted snare that remains potent to this day. That is why I say, Tarnished, don't go near the manor unless you wish to lie with the corpses of the heedless knights of the Cuckoo. Evidently, the Academy's betrayal against the Karians would not come as a surprise as Master Eiji seemed to have thought, as described by the spell Karian Retaliation. One of the sorceries of the Karian royal family. This was the Karian royal family's secret means to prepare against the disloyalty of the Academy. The moon and the stars would one day go their separate ways. Another piece of evidence that seems to point at the Karian suspicions is the Karian Knight's shield, which states, carried by knights who serve the Karian royal family, excels when facing magic or holy attacks. Just who were these knights preparing to fight? The shield's heightened defense against spell damage would prove useful against other sorcerers, but the holy damage is curious. Those who predominantly use holy damage are usually those aligned with the Golden Order, like Radagon himself. Very curious indeed. Sadly, the Karian royals would be toppled, and Lyurnia would be left in ruin. While civil war waged to the south in Lyurnia, Radagon returned to the royal capital of Lyondell, where he became Queen Merica's second king consort and the second Elden Lord. Melania and Mikola are the twins born to the couple. Melania's great runes description tells us, Melania is daughter to Queen Merica and Radagon, and her great rune should have been the most sacred of all. The triple rings of light incantation confirms this as well a gift from the young Mikola to his father, Radagon. So there is no question that they are both related to Queen Merica and Radagon. His children with Queen Rinala would be raised in status to demigods due to their new relationship with Queen Merica. Rikard's great rune description reads, Rikard was amongst the children of Rinala and Radagon who became demigod's stepchildren after Radagon's union with Queen Merica. Once he became Elden Lord, Radagon would more popularly become known as Radagon of the Golden Order. The Golden Order of the Erdtree was something of which he was passionately loyal to. The Golden Order Greatsword describes Radagon's intense faith. Greatsword made of light, modeled after the Elden Ring itself forged by King Consort Radagon to proudly symbolize the tenets of the Golden Order. What's interesting about this sword is not what it currently is, but what it once was. Telltale signs betray that this was once the great sword bequeathed to him by his first wife, Rinala. When completing Rani the Witch's questline, she gives the player the Dark Moon Greatsword which describes this old Karian tradition. A moon greatsword bestowed by a Karian queen upon her spouse to honor long-standing tradition. Radagon took the greatsword given to him by Queen Rinala and reforged it in the exact image of the Elden Ring. That's just how devout he was to the Golden Order. Radagon refocused his priorities back onto his studies as the rest of the description for Radagon's icon tells us. As the husband of Queen Merica, he studied incantations. Thus did the hero aspire to be complete. He would be successful in this pursuit and share it with his son, Mikola. The incantation Radagon's Rings of Light says one of the incantations of the Golden Order Fundamentalists, a gift of gratitude to the young Mikola from his father, Radagon. Mikola, however, would eventually turn his back on his father in order to pursue his own goals, separate from the Golden Order's will. And yet, 
The young Mikola abandoned fundamentalism, for it could do nothing to treat Melania's accursed rot. I have a whole separate video on Mikola and what his goals were. You can click up on the link at the top of this video or at the end if you're interested in that topic. Then, everything would change. On a night that would be known as the Night of the Black Knives, Queen Rerika's son from her first marriage, Godwin the Golden, was murdered in a plot crafted by Princess Rani, Renala and Radagon's only daughter. Rani herself confirms this. I stole a fragment of the Rune of Death and used it to forge the god-slaying black knives through fearsome right. I did it all. I won't get into the details of that plot or the consequences that followed after, but if you're curious, I have a whole video on the Prince of Death. You can check that out after this one as well. Almost immediately after this event, Queen Merica would do the unthinkable, the single most important decision that would set into motion the entire game, shattering the Elden Ring itself. Merica's hammer is the tool with which Queen Merica shattered the Elden Ring, but Radagon, on the other hand, attempted to repair it. Queen Merica's actions would ripple throughout the lands between, and as punishment, she would be imprisoned inside the Erd Tree. Queen Merica is the vessel of the Elden Ring, carrier of its vision, a god in truth. But after the Elden Ring's shattering, she was imprisoned in the Erd Tree, a grim punishment for shattering the Order. Despite her godhood. The two fingers in the round table hold weigh in on this as well. Marika's trespass demanded a heavy sentence. But even in shackles, she remains a god and a vision's vessel. When we finally make it into the Ur Tree, we find that both Radagon and Queen Marika were imprisoned inside. That is because Radagon is Marika. It is then that we, the Tarnished, are faced with killing a god. And that brings us to the abrupt end of Radagon of the Golden Order's timeline. There are still many questions that remain, and I'll be working on a part 2 theory video to come out very soon. I hope that this timeline proves to be helpful, and please leave any corrections, suggestions, and questions you may have in the comments down below. Thank you to the few of you who stuck it out all the way to the end of this video. I appreciate all of your continued support on my channel, and as always, I can't wait to talk to you all on the next one. Bye!